the let's weigh good intentions versus actions. What should you care more about? Uh, how much grace should you give somebody? How much grace did you give someone in addiction? And what is a healthy balance of in judge, you know, weighing intentions versus actually judging someone by their actions. Mm -hmm. Welcome beautiful people. And thank you for joining us on till the wheels fall off a podcast by two folk couple. I'm Matt and I'm Paige and we're here to inspire others to bring you guys into our lives and tell you a little bit about our journey over 20 years together. We've learned a few things. We're going to work toward being the best version of yourself possible. We're going to dig into building a positive mindset, discuss mental health, addiction recovery, improving fitness, building businesses, and insight into what it takes to navigate life today. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Till the Wheels Fall Off. I'm Matt. And I'm Paige. Today we're talking intentions versus actions. Man, this has come up more times than I can count here in the last month or so. Seriously. It's just been like all over the place. Yeah. So we started thinking about it. I think this is a really good topic to cover, especially when we're talking about addiction, but just relationships in general. Intentions versus actions. There is an old saying, you've probably heard it before, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And that's the case, right? Um, if you ascribe to the biblical teachings that you're ultimately judged for your actions, actions, then just having good intentions is not enough. Right. I think that there's some merit to that. Agreed. But I don't think it's an all or nothing. Mm. So we'll get into kind of what that means and what that looks like, but we'll start the discussion with that. Just think about that, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We'll talk about a story real quick from our personal lives. Something that was pretty difficult as we were. I always like to tell a personal story, you know, but this one was kind of tough. This is a little raw. Um, so I can just describe how this looks in our, our relationship at one time in our lives. I used to be addicted to opiates like crazy. And I would have to take anywhere between like on a minimum 20 a day just to get by just so I wouldn't get sick and acquiring 20 pills every day. Minimum is an absolute nightmare having to drive, meet people, Go through the Rolodex in your phone of all these, you know, different dealers that you've dealt with over time. It's just, it's a nightmare. I remember um, we're coming up on the time of the year where the, the fair usually rolls around. And like, we love going to the fair, like to the point where whenever we used to live close to it, we would ride the train down there and we would eat dinner down there like three nights a week, four nights a week. Heck yeah, baby. <laughs> Packed on some pounds, but man, we were eating good. Yeah. Real good. We loved it. Something we've, we were doing when we were kids. We dated and we were doing it. When we got married, we did it. We take our kids to this day. It's always been special to us. State but I remember, Fair of Texas. <laughs> I remember this time we were we were getting ready to go to the fair and we, we had made plans. Like I think it was, a, it was a Saturday. So Friday we made the plans to go. Paige was super excited and like got up that morning. I got up that morning. And the first thing I felt that morning was not excitement. It was like sickness. Like I need to get some pills or I'm going to get sick, but I really wanted to go to the fair. I knew that she really wanted to go to the fair. So then I had to start making phone calls and that led me to, um, this, this drug house and then a few towns over and like drug dealers run the worst business ever. Like I've always <laughs> said this, like, for real. For business owners, they are the worst, man. Like they're never on time. Their prices are always all over the place. Like their service sucks. But when you're an addict, you need them. So you deal with it. But it was one of those situations where, hey, I'll meet you here at this time. I showed up and like two hours later, this dude finally comes through. And it's like a 45 minute drive each way. So like four or five hours later, I come home and like you're on the couch. You've been ready forever. You have no idea why I've been gone or, you know, the... I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't tell you what I was doing. No, it but, was always an excuse. Like I had to go to the store. I had to go, um, drive around the lake for three hours to get my clear mind, my mind or yeah. something like that. It was always something, right? Some BS. Yes. Yeah. And so I arrive and you're really upset. Like feel like I've let you down. Like what the hell? Not communicating with me. We're supposed to be gone four or five hours ago. I don't even want to go anymore. I remember having like this fight that like, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Like, almost telling you like you don't have the right to be upset because I did that wasn't my intention to hurt your feelings and leaving you sitting there feeling like what what the hell yeah like well, well it doesn't matter you hurt my feelings like so it's not always so clear-cut right no intentions versus actions yeah 
especially when you're dealing with someone in addiction, because I've said this before, like they're not bad people, just people in the grips of this thing that they have very little control over. Some would claim zero control over and it hijacks them. And you know that there's a good person in there, but to what degree do you allow this to harm you or other people? Mm -hmm. And to what degree are addicts responsible for their actions? Right. And the disease concept, we can get into that just, just momentarily. I'm not going to sit here and argue that it doesn't exist. I personally have always just felt like it just sort of irrelevant to me, like yeah. disease or not. I'm, I, I take this perspective of ruthless accountability, Yep. regardless if I've got something physiologically wrong with me or not, I have a responsibility to do something about it. Boom. So I never really used the addiction thing as an excuse. Actually, I can say for a fact, I never used it as an excuse. No, you didn't. At any point in my recovery or pre-recovery, Yeah. use it as an excuse. I've seen people use it as an excuse. I've also seen people use it in a really healthy way, which is why I think it can be used for good or for bad. Yeah. But either way. To what degree are people who are quote unquote under the dicks of, you know, under the, the, the uh, grips of this disease responsible? Yeah. So we'll get into it. We'll get into it. That was our story with it, but this happens in relationships in general. Um, you might have someone in your life who is just perpetually late. Like they're late to everything. They screw your plans up. Let's say that they're, let's say it's like um, a family member. They're supposed to be like watching your kids or something. And like you're late for dinner with your husband every Saturday because they're late getting there and yeah. they've always got some excuse mm -hmm. and like when they show up, like they're in a good mood, like you, you know that they mean well, but damn it, you're late again. Like what the heck? Like I know that you're, you're helping us out and all, but you're always late. You bring it up and what do you normally get? You get resistance. Yeah. Like if you address it, you get resistance because their intention wasn't to hurt you. And this is like the, the like the grassroots of gaslighting. This is where this happens. Absolutely. Was just, it's like, you don't deserve to feel that way because that wasn't my intention. Since right. I didn't mean to hurt you, you're not allowed to be upset by it. I'm still a good person. Mm. And man, I see this in fact, not just addicted relationships, but healthy ones too, like quote unquote healthy ones, right? So ones where you don't have addiction. Mm -hmm. this, in, this, this, is a, this is a common issue that a lot of people deal with. So we're going to dig into it today. We'll talk about the, the, let's weigh good intentions versus actions. What should you care more about uh, how much grace should you give somebody how much grace should you give someone in addiction and what is a healthy balance of in judge you know weighing intentions versus actually judging someone by their actions mm -hmm. so there's this article i found up it's really good uh written back in when was this two no this is fairly recent this is the other one leslie becker phelps phd over at psychology today wrote an article why good intentions aren't enough for a good relationship intention without empathy or action is often the path to broken relationships it's a really really good article where she kind of breaks down that and essentially um, intentions are not enough for a good relationship yeah. that in order to have a good relationship, you can't just judge yourself based off of your intentions right? because other people are going to judge you off of your actions. Mm -hmm. Eventually. I think that grace has a, an expiration date. Yes. And you can wear that out pretty quickly. Yeah. If you are like a perpetual screw up. <laughs> yeah. Eventually you run out of good grace. How much like, okay with me, mm -hmm. how much grace would you say that you gave me back then? I gave you a lot of grace over and over and over again, but I was young. It was so different. What else played into that though? Was it potential you saw in me? Well, was yeah, it, it was the potential. It was the good stuff that you were showing me all the time. Like, oh yeah, you're going to be a good man. You'd always tell me I'm going to be a good man one day. And I always believed it. So it's, it's tough sometimes whenever you're looking at someone in this to say, I'm just going to base you off your actions because that's all I can see when you know that you mean your intentions. No, my actions, like it's, it's tough to just, to just look at this black and white and say, I'm only going to judge you by your actions yeah. rather than considering your intentions because you knew my intentions were good. Right. But at some point you got to look at your life and say, this can't fly anymore. Yeah. If it's happening over and over and over again, there has to be, there's a pattern there of behavior. There's no accountability. That's a problem. It's affecting your mental health and your mental, like everything. Then you need to look at this and say, hmm, maybe their intentions, they could still be genuine, but their actions are not following those intentions. Yeah. And from the other side of that, what it feels like is I, I knew that I was wearing thin on the, 
the grace. Yeah. I knew that it was going to run out and there was an expiration date for it. And at some point my actions were going to have to agree with my intentions. Yes. And I couldn't just be a hope and a prayer all the time. And just this box of potential that could one day be something great. Right. You know, I had to actually back that up. I mean, that's why I started detaching with love or, you know, I didn't know that I was doing that intentionally, but I was doing it because your actions were not they were not going along with your intentions and I was tired of it. Yeah. There's no congruence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So this, this author, um, this is, I'll I'll read this really quick. She talks about intention with inaction. Sometimes despite good intentions, people simply don't prioritize their partner. They often, they offer to take their partner out for dinner, but cancel because of a work commitment. Mm, That was familiar. Mm -hmm. Work was always coming first. They want their partner to have a happy birthday, but don't actually make plans. The bottom line is that intentions are great, but they are not actions. And the result of inaction is predictable. Someone may be very understanding, but even the most gracious person will eventually get the message that they are not important. And that never bodes well for a relationship. Yep. Man, that defines me like Mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Like I always (laughs) meant well, like I wanted you to have a good day. I wanted you to have a happy birthday. I wanted you to, you know, I wanted to have a good time at the fair, but eventually at some point, like you got to tote the mail. Like you have to do what you say you're going to do. Yes. It's what's difficult when we deal with is I think we deal with a lot of people who are in the middle of this very thing right now where it's, I see that there's good in you. I know your intentions are pure, but I can't take any more punches. I can't do this crap. Mm -hmm. I am beat down. And at some point I've got to make a decision. Yeah. And I also believe that if you are constantly, saying that intentions are good enough and you're giving this person a lot of grace, that's a form of enabling. I agree with that. At some point it becomes enabling. Yes. Because that person is not having any consequences for their actions. They're not having to have, um, they're, they're just living life by, Oh, I can get away with my intentions. Yeah. Because over time, what you're doing is essentially you're letting them know that that behavior is acceptable. It's acceptable, it's acceptable exactly. because I have not done anything about it. So therefore your intentions are all we're going to judge you on. Yeah. And it's not like they're still not meaning to hurt you. Like I never meant to hurt anybody. No, I never meant to hurt anyone, but ruthless accountability. I did care more about how I felt in that moment than you did. Yeah. I didn't care so much about if we really ran late, I was like, I could get her to understand it. You know, I could Mm -hmm. figure this out. I could talk my way out of this one. At the end of the day, all I wanted to do was to feel better. Mm-hmm. And I disregarded everyone else's feelings, wants, desires for that. Yeah. It's all that mattered in that moment was that I needed to feel better. So yeah, like my intentions weren't sinister, you know, they weren't disgusting by any means, but my actions were harmful. Yeah. And for you to say that, you know, I can just, I can talk to her about this and I'll get through this, you know, we'll figure it out and everything. That's kind of messed up too. <laughs> yeah. It's gaslighting in a nutshell, basically, yeah. you know? trying to convince someone that it's not that big of a deal or the problem's not severe as you think it is Mm -hmm. and and all that stuff. But I know many people, I've met many people. I used to be a person that would love to do, if you just judged me on my intentions, I'd have won a Nobel Peace Prize, man. Yeah. My intentions were the greatest ever. But at the end of the day, our actions are what really matter. It's how we affect people by what we actually do. Yeah. I, you know, let's say I got in a car accident. I didn't intend to hit you. I didn't intend to get into a car accident, but it's my responsibility to, you know, deal with the repercussions. Like there's consequences to that. Yeah. You didn't wake up and be like, I'm going to run into the back of this guy. Right. It sounds fun. Right. But you still have to deal with it. Yeah. Like there's no grace there. No. So why do we give so much grace to intentions? Like so much grace to where it's like, I'm talking years and years of grace whenever it is affecting us mentally. Like, I feel like this whole intentions conversation, I was telling Matt, you know, telling you beforehand that this is like almost common sense for me. Like, I feel like intentions and actions, like you have got to show me with your behavior. It's like when I was raised that when you say you're sorry, that means you're not going to do it again. Like you hold yourself accountable. You change your behavior. That's what matters. It's not the fact that, oh, my intentions were pure, so I can treat you like shit. That's okay. Like, that's not okay. I agree with that. I agree I just, with that. I just, I don't know. It goes on mine. I, I think that it's not as simple as that, though. Like, I would love for it to be, and I think it, I've always admired the way your brain works because you're <laughs> able to look at things so simply. 
but for me, I've, it's more complex because you're dealing with emotions and love and empathy. And I think I've got some codependent type behaviors as well, Mm -hmm. where I've always tried to see the good in people. And Mm -hmm. I've always tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. I've tried to, 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 to give them empathy and like put myself in their shoes like, oh, I've been there before. I understand what that's like. I totally get it. And I give people passes over, over and, and over, over again, and over right. and over. But- and then at some point you have to, like for me, I shouldn't say you, me, what I had to do is look at the situation and look at the pattern. Like even if you have to write this stuff down and look yep. at it over time and say, what does the pattern say? Mm-hmm. The pattern says that over time, you don't really care about my needs or my wants or my time. Mm-hmm. You only care about what's going on in your life, right? Like you don't make exceptions. You don't go out of your way. It's just about you. It's the you show. Yeah. It's my, I mean nothing. So you have, I had to make decisions. I've had to make decisions of some relationships that, you know what, at the end of the day, I just don't think that we have the same values. I don't think that we see things the same way Mm -hmm. and detach from those relationships. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy. I'm do not mean to make that sound like it's just, oh yeah, just one, two, three, you're good to go. It's no, all of this is difficult, but it's just when it comes, I've, I guess when it came to intentions and actions, it's always been a big deal for me to like look at it pretty simply. Like if somebody's treating me like trash over and over again on a pattern, even though their intentions are pure, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not going to give you grace over and over and over again. Man, and it's what's tough is I think that the the language around addiction in itself, family members, you can, you can research it, you can Google this, and here's what you're going to find. You're going to find that you need to be incredibly empathetic and positive and you need to um, consider intentions and actions and have empathy understanding and a non-judgmental approach toward your loved one's addiction and I think in some ways that's true in other ways I think that is some of the most dangerous advice you can give somebody yep for their own personal well-being exactly because someone will read that and generally someone who's empathetic will read that and be like okay well that's what I'm going to do I'm going to be empathetic and be understanding. I'm going to be non-judgmental. I'm not going to be critical and I'm just going to let them figure this out just because they have the intention to quit. Right. But they've shown no effort or action toward quitting. Mm-hmm. So like how long the, we, we see firsthand what the result of doing this is. Yeah. Is you lose yourself. You forget who you are. You, you look up and 20 years have gone by on the calendar and you're like, Holy shit, my life's over. Yeah. What am I going to do? Right. Like now I'm stuck and this person has shown no want or desire because I've been incredibly empathetic and genuine and I've tried to do the right thing and I've been, I've given grace. Yeah. So when is grace too much? When is there too much grace? I think that's such a personal, everyone's different, right? It is. Everyone's situation is a little bit different, but I think I sh- I just want people to know that there is a limit. Right. And that has an expiration date. Agreed. Think of it like a fuel gauge. There is a, there, you can hit E. Yeah. You can hit E and yeah. you're not a bad person if you hit E. Yep. Cause I can tell you from an addict standpoint, like I'd understand if you walked away, right. I would understand if people decided not to deal with me anymore, I would understand eventually in the beginning, you might have someone throw a fit, get pissed mm-hmm. at you and tell you how you're awful and you're disgusting. How I have a disease. How could you leave me? But man, it's just, I, I think that's why that, that disease concept can be so damaging. Yeah. Like I'm not saying abandon every person who's struggling, but I am saying that at some point there's got to be There's a action. line. That's where your boundaries come in. That's there's got to be some action. That. Yeah. You matter too in this deal and it's not just not just about them sit by and just kind of, you know, let them figure this out. Could be decades, maybe never. There's no telling. Yeah. But, you know, let's start looking at actions a little more. Mm-hmm. In our world anyway, let's start looking at actions a little bit more cuz I, I don't think anyone has a problem giving grace that we know. Right. That we've dealt with or we've read stories by anything like that. These people have plenty of grace. Mm-hmm. I think that there needs to be a little more accountability on the actions. Yes. And again, I ain't an, I'm not an addict basher. Like I love them. I love them to death. I work with them. I do everything I can to volunteer. You are time. one. <laughs> I am one like, t- to get them well. But like, um, I met with a guy today and we talked about this very thing, intentions versus actions. Mm-hmm. We talked about communication and how that's important. And if you're not communicating what your intentions even are, then you sort of live in your own little reality inside your head where you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not, Mm -hmm. you know? And if you're sitting idle, like as the spouse, just kind of letting this stuff unfold, assuming what their intentions are, then you have two people who are nowhere close to being on the same page or the same planet. Yeah. Like you can be in an addiction and still communicate about where you're at. Yeah. You, you can do that. Do you think that consequences to just 
since you didn't have behavior, do you think that if you would have gotten sober quicker, had there been consequences? Personally, I would have for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that not having consequences of any kind for me personally kept me out longer. Right. Um, it was when the consequences started knocking on the door, you know, doop, doop, doop. Hey, we're here. It's time. Right. Chickens come home to roost. Right. We are here. That's when I started to get really serious about stuff. Right. I could see the writing on the wall where things were headed. And I've, I've seen p plenty of people tell their stories and say, you know, consequences are what ultimately got them sober consequences of some kind, because that's when the stuff really becomes tangible. It's real. Like right. This is, the, this is what's happened. And you have to look at things objectively and say, because I did X, Y happened mm -hmm. and you can't really fight your intentions on that anymore. The action there shows that it affected other people and like especially when it comes to legal right like you yeah. can't argue that stuff right but even within a relationship like boundaries um or could be observed as an addict as a form of a consequence mm -hmm. for you it's really just about keeping you safe but i could look at that and say huh i've lost access to this person in this way that's sort of like a consequence yeah you know exactly. like i don't get to spend time with them or i don't get to to be with them in the same room if i'm doing this or if i'm not in recovery then they're not going to live with me like those are consequences yeah I hope they would view them as consequences, not, right. you know, not as some kind of perk or something. But right. Yeah. I, I don't think that you can just look at addiction and say that you should never judge an addict just based off of, I mean, just based off their actions because they're sick people. I think that that's, that's dangerous. And I think that that's my personal opinion. I think that's false. I mean, it's absolutely false. I think that people can be judged by their actions. I mean, I think this is a probably a terrible example, but think about what transpired, um, you know, like with Nazi Germany in World War II. Mm -hmm. ask people on that side what they thought they were doing and they could probably justify to you why they thought they were doing and had good intentions. Yes. The most heinous, disgusting crimes ever perpetuated on humanity arguably were led by good intentions. Exactly. So don't tell me we shouldn't judge people by their actions. Mm -hmm. Their actions are everything. Yeah. F their intentions. Yep. Mean nothing to me. Yes. Absolutely nothing. Yes. You know, logic is broken. It was a selfish motive. It's disgusting. It's, it's despicable. But behind every action is someone who's willing to back that up with an intention that is just disgusting. Mm -hmm. So let's quit looking at intentions as the only thing that we're going to judge people by. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that you can look at that and say, this is all that matters. I think that there is a balancing act though. Mm -hmm. There's a balancing act. Like you can give some people grace sometimes. Well, yeah, but especially if they hold themselves accountable sometimes, like if they do say, Oh, my intentions weren't we're good. And I'm sorry that I did that to you. I apologize. You know, I'll try to do better next time. Yeah. You can give somebody grace there. Yeah. Accountability is everything. Yeah. When it comes to like, okay, do they deserve to get grace again? Yeah. Like taking accountability and understanding that. Yeah. So like the process of amends is a process of accountability and it's a process of separating the intentions from the actual action. And I work with, addicts through this thing where you make amends to people and I tell them it's sort of tricky and it's kind of a mind game but like you don't get to say you're sorry you're not allowed to say you're sorry because sorry for most of us it's just something we say and then we just forget about it mm -hmm. right a proper apology has three parts mm -hmm. it's one what I did was wrong mm -hmm. two I feel badly that I hurt you mm -hmm. and three what can I do to make this right mm -hmm. so you're taking accountability you're acknowledging the harm done and then you are taking an action. action to make up for the harm. Yeah. Taking responsibility. Right. That's a proper amends. Simply saying you're sorry, eh, mm -hmm. you know? Words like, are cheap. And here's another thing when it comes to making real amends is that no buts, no yeah, because, or any of that stuff. Like, yeah. Don't try to justify it. Mm -hmm. Look at your part in this. Yep. Take ruthless accountability and move forward. Whatever that person decides to, to say, most people will say, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing awesome. Some people might be like, you owe me $500 you've never paid me back for. Mm -hmm. You better cough it up. Figure out a way to pay them back. Do something. There are financial <laughs> amends. There are living amends. Yeah. There are emotional amends. Yeah. You know, we've gone through all of these. Yeah. But that's part of the process. So like, if part of recovery is accountability and it is proper actions moving forward, then why are we not holding people responsible for it in addiction? It's part of recovery. It's part of life. You know, I think an, another example just popped in my head, but um, good intentions gone wrong is overprotective parenting. Oh, yeah. Parents that want to protect their children, like that is good intentions. You want to protect your babies. You want to make sure that they're safe. You want to make sure that they're, you know, they have no harm done to them. 
But if you're overbearing with that, what ultimately happens is they lose their independence. They have difficulty making decisions when they're older. Um, you know, they, they may have problems socially because they've never had to do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it has unintended consequences. These good intentions ended up screwing up generation of kids. Right. You know, <laughs> where they don't know how to do anything. Yeah. Right? They're scared it's to true. They're scared to pick up the phone and talk to anyone. Right, right. Because they had overbearing parents, overprotective that were good intentioned. Like, uh -huh. don't get me wrong. But the flip side of that is that to own it and say, damn, yeah, I see how that works. So yeah. just because you have good intentions doesn't mean that you should be absolved of responsibility for your actions. Yep. It's just, I don't care. Like, I know where it comes from. I totally get it. Like, I have, like, no one wants to protect their ego more than a, a dude like me with mm -hmm. a history of addiction and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, my ego is incredibly fragile. This stuff is like, like, fine china. Like it wants to break just when the wind blows, you know, but <laughs> like, okay. Like I'm not too good to look at my intentions and question myself and say, okay, how was that harmful to you? How did it hurt? Got it. Okay. Moving mm -hmm. forward. And as the partner to look at someone like me in active addiction, if you have a partner in active addiction to look at them and say, okay, at what point am I going to start judging them by their actions and not their intentions? Mm -hmm. Because your intentions can be incredibly pure and you can be putting a needle in your arm every single day and ruining your family. Let's be real. Most people have good intentions. Most but people then that do. means that they would get away with stuff all the time if we just based everything on intentions. Yeah, for sure. So we have to hold people accountable. Yeah. At some point we have to hold people accountable. Yeah. Boundaries are a good way to do that. Um, good open conversations are also a really good way to do that mm -hmm. about your feelings and how you've, you've felt with these things. And to understand that just because they're explaining and trying to justify themselves does not excuse their behavior. Yeah. And if you're in a relationship with someone like that, it is incredibly frustrating, mm -hmm. incredibly frustrating. I think couples counseling goes a long way with stuff like this. Absolutely. Getting that stuff out in the open and being able to discuss it uh, in a forum with a, a third party yeah. is really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you sort of got to weigh in your mind, okay, how much grace am I willing to give? At what point am I going to consider their actions and not just consider their intentions and then make decisions moving forward? And like, I wish I could tell you exactly what to do here, but it's not always so clear. <laughs> I would suggest to anybody, start to look at the actions a little heavier than you do now. Yeah. I told Matt earlier, three strikes and you're out. <laughs> yeah, she's she was tough about this, man. She's like, you get three I, strikes. I'm tough about this now because I know what I will tolerate and what I won't tolerate. And I will not tolerate a relationship just based on good intentions. I won't. You'll get three chances and that's it. Like, what, what strike am I on, by the way? You're good. You're not. You have no strikes. Counts. Counts. Zero, zero. Yes. No balls, no strikes. No balls, no strikes. You're okay, good. Okay, cool. I'll take that. Yeah. You got to let me know when I get a strike, though. Yeah, I'll let you know. Changes my whole approach. But how would you feel? Like, what about me? Like, what if it was swapped? What if I had, if our relationship was just based on my intentions and there were no actions? You wouldn't put up with that. Would you? Man, after what I put you through, that's a terrible question. <laughs> I think you've got a pretty, pretty big do I have like of, pretty big tank of grace. Do I have 10 years worth of grace? Pretty good amount for no, sure. No, that's <laughs> stupid. But I think I've always been decent with my intentions and, and, and I know I'll own up if my actions don't match my intentions. Like I've always tried to do that. And I expect that in return in a healthy relationship. That's how it works. It is not built on intentions. It's not, it's not going to be healthy. No, like I've, I've had relationships with people that I'm extremely close with, like extremely close with. And I ultimately had to make a decision to, I haven't ended those relationships, but we don't talk much mm -hmm. because the, when I brought up the actions versus the intentions, I was essentially told, that's stupid. I, you know, I didn't mean that, mm -hmm. but it's like, I've got a book full of these now. I can't ignore the fact that I have to think at some point you knew. Yeah. Or maybe you didn't know, you just didn't care. Right. Or you're still not willing to take action or accountability responsibility for or responsibility it. for the action that was total opposite of the intentions. Yeah. Like, when is somebody going to say, yeah, I hurt you. I'm sorry. Like when do the people say that people who have good intentions don't typically do that because they are holding on to their intentions. Yeah. And so there's a lack of accountability, which is one of our big values, man. That's for me is like a big value. So for me personally, that was a major one. Like someone who won't take accountability. I don't really have a lot of patience for. Right. So that's how, that's where I am at. Like in our marriage for how long we've been together, I will not tolerate that because I have, 
you know, that higher self-esteem now. I know what I stand for and what I tolerate. And that's not, I'm not going to do it again. I know what it's like. You did it for years. I love you. <laughs> it's all good. I understand. But you do understand, right? Like that's totally understand. Not, I totally understand. And, it. and I don't want, and I want my children to know, I want them to have, they need to, I've, one of my biggest things as a mom was, is to raise my children to learn how to hold themselves accountable. Yeah. And then intentions don't mean everything that their actions are what's important. Right. I, I, that's so important for me as a mom. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at things too, because ultimately the world will judge you by your actions. Yeah. Ultimately they will. Yeah. Especially people that don't know you super well. They're going to judge you by your actions. Some people might say I'm cold hearted though. You feel like I'm cold hearted when I say this shit. I think after what you've been through, it's only natural the way you are. But I don't think there's anything wrong. I think that it's healthy for people to be that way. I think it's a healthy way to look at it because now you're protecting your peace. Yes. You're protecting your sanity. You're protecting your mind and your space and your time Mm -hmm. with people that agree with your values and you're not giving time to those that don't. Yeah. You're not giving people that time and you're not being ugly about it. You're just not giving them the time. Exactly. I think that's fair. I don't think that's, how is that unfair? I don't. You know, I think I'm one of those people who have to look within myself all the time and I question a lot of stuff, but well, you know, we, I, when it comes to intentions and actions, I know where I stand here. Like we've talked before about empath, empathetic people and how these are people that have just, they feel feelings like you would not imagine mm-hmm. and they are so emotionally authentic and they can always see the best in people and they can always see their part in things and often they disregard what others have done because they amplify their own part in things. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are in these relationships. So I hope this discussion is eye opening to an extent to say that like you might be giving someone a bit too much grace. Yeah. I mean, just, and you can look at, I'm not calling anyone on this, but codependent behaviors. I mean, you're probably giving too much. Yeah. You're probably giving them a bit too much. Right. And over time, this is going to enable this person. Uh, It's going to foster dependence, irresponsibility, incompetence, poor character decisions. Mm -hmm. That's the result of it. Yeah. And to someone in an addiction with no desire to get better, like that's not getting better anytime soon. Yeah. There's a smaller subsect of people, of of addicts in general, that want to do better. They just don't know where to start. Like I've known people, and it's terrible to watch, someone who's like, I want to stop. I just can't. I just Mm -hmm. can't. Maybe you give them a bit more grace, but even that's got a freaking time that's yeah. got a time. That's got a time. Yes, that does have a line. Because yeah. I look at you. You did it. It's possible. It's possible. It is possible to get out of addiction and alcoholism. It's possible. I've seen it firsthand. I've watched it. So for when people constantly say, I can't do it. I don't know how. My intentions are good, but I can't do it. I'm sorry, but you can. Just there's, there's ways. There is hope. There's there people who can get is you help. There is hope. Yeah. And you think about the enabling side of this, giving someone grace over and over and over just based on the intentions. Think about what it does to them emotionally and like without maybe even subconsciously without them realizing it mm-hmm. is that um, you're causing them to stagnate and at, at a stage of development, you yeah. know, it prevents them from developing like life skills right? and how to hold themselves accountable and how to do the right thing right there. <laughs> you know, it's, Jeez. it's, it's unsustainable over time. It just, it is at some point, the stuff, the, the tank will run out. You will find yourself in a self-sacrificing relationship mm-hmm. and you know, they call it quote unquote codependence. I think it's a little more, it's deeper than that. I think so too. It's deeper than that, but yeah. and it's tricky. And I'm just saying that we get it. Like you're not a bad person because you give people chances. You're not a bad person no, because you do consider just, people's intentions. Cause it, I think you should consider intentions sometimes. Right. This is just educating. And this is just letting you know what, how it can work in this type of relationship and what we've been through and how our experience can help you with intentions and actions and how accountability is huge in an addict relationship. Yeah, man. It's, it's tricky. I hope that this was helpful in some way. <laughs> it is tricky. God is tricky. Intentions versus actions, though. You know, we look at intentions versus actions, and I'm under the belief, you're under the belief that intentions mean very little. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, actions mean everything. Yeah. I think for me, if I'm going to look at intentions, it's got to be situational. Absolutely. And it's got to be unique. Yep. But in general, I'm going to look at the action. Mm-hmm. Like, even though you meant well, could have seen this coming a million times. Yep. So you're st- I'm still holding you accountable. Yeah. There are other cases where it's like, damn, okay, yeah, you you meant you meant the world, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> little kids will do things like they'll try to help you, like they'll try to do things around the house and like they'll break something. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, I'm not gonna 
you know, ground this kid. Like he's trying to do the right thing. Right. He's freaking six. Exactly. You know, like, okay, dude. Yes. Yeah. I really appreciate right. that. Just be more careful. Here's how you do this. Maybe show him the way, but mm-hmm. if he does it again, we've talked about this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to ground you this time. Right. There you go. One strike. It's, right not, even, it's not even three. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, boo. But considering intentions can be helpful. Yeah. Someone that has a repeated pattern of using that to their benefit and mm-hmm. gaslighting you because of it mm-hmm. probably doesn't deserve a whole lot more grace. Right. Just sit, just leave it at that. Okay. All right. If you're not already part of our community, head over to our Facebook community. It's called Tufo Community, T-W-F-O Community. You can find it by clicking any of the links under our profiles, Instagram or TikTok. Uh, maybe Twitter if it's even up there. Hopefully you don't follow us on Twitter because we don't post anything on Twitter. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> TikTok, you can, you can, you can find us primarily over there, mm-hmm. dropping gems just about every single day. Uh, we've got guides on our website. You can book a free consultation with us if you don't want to work with us one on one. Inquire with us about how you, you know, how that could help for you. Um, partners as well. We do couples, a little bit of everything. Love to see you guys in the community. We were also got weekly calls available. So every week there's a free call. We hop on, we talk to the community. It's a place for you guys to process things. It's, it's been pretty awesome. It has. It's been pretty awesome. I love doing those calls. Mm-hmm. I look forward to those every Me single too. week. Okay. Well, until next time, I am Matt. I am Paige. And we'll see you. Bye.